Matt Edelman. Uh, the name of our game is Heddleby. My teammates are Sigar, Danad, uh, and not here are um, Varun and Sonal, and of course Anna Lako, the creative project director for the game. Uh, so without further ado, I'll start things up. Uh, so this is the main menu for our game. Uh, you can see the title of our game is Heddleby, and our, our motto is Hear Your Fear. That is, of course, because we're an interactive sound-based challenge game. Uh, so as you can see from the main menu, you have two main options from in terms of going into gameplay. Um, your first option is to go into the story mode. So just to click over to the info page, uh, just so you can see that we have some information about the basic game. Uh, the basic um, idea about the game is you are a prisoner in this prison called Heddleby, and um, in the opening sequence of the game, you're actually executed. And in order to progress and learn more about your fate, you need to um, go through the story mode and um, learn more and more about your character by first accomplishing these interactive sound challenges, uh, followed by a touch-based interaction. So I'll go right into the story mode. Okay, so this is the opening sequence. Um, it basically starts out by playing three minutes of linear audio to introduce you into the game. Uh, we have this menu on the bottom that allows you to see your current chapter that you're in in the game. Uh, you can pause, um, which allows you to go back to the main menu or continue where you were at. Um, we'll just continue for now because we're in the main menu, we're in the uh, story mode. Um, you can also go ahead and skip forward um, using that skip button. Um, just to give you guys some intuition about what's happening, um, in terms of the visuals. So the center graphic is actually uh, supposed to be a visualization, um, an abstract visualization of a mouth. So that's actually mapped directly to the voice track that you guys hear playing in the background. Um, and then simil in a, using a similar method, the, um, the other objects that you see appearing are mapped to the background track. So you might not be able to hear it that well because it's being played over speakers, but there's actually a heartbeat in the background that the red is being mapped to, and uh, these green lines are being mapped to the EKG. Um, since this part is best experience over headphones, um, I'm just going to skip through most of the linear audio part for now. Um, I would highly suggest for you guys to come and play our game and actually listen to all this because it's like really cool. And we actually got all original voice actors to do all the recordings. So um, I think it sounds really good, but for purposes of the demo, I'm just going to kind of skip ahead. Um, so skipping ahead to the first sound interactive challenge, um, you have a little piece of UI on the bottom that says, this is you. That logo in the center is your point of reference to the sound. So this is actually really best experience um, over headphones, because what you're doing is you're tracking sound in 3D space and using the iPad to track that. So um, clicking the bottom actually gives you some instructions on how to play. Um, since I designed the sound, I kind of know where the sound is. Um, so just to explain the mechanic, um, if the line that, you're, um, that you see appears yellow, it means that you are close to the sound in 3D space. Um, and you can see that the progress bar will increase a little bit. Um, if, you're, if you're hitting red, it means that you're far away from the sound, and the progress will actually decrease on that top bar. And if you're good enough to hit green, which I hopefully am because I made the sound, uh, then you can see you, you increase uh, with progress very, very fast. Um, again, this part of the game is like really fun to play if you're playing with headphones because that's the way it was designed. Um, but um, for purposes of the demo, I'll just um, go ahead and like, win this part of the game. Um, but I really do encourage you all to come and play that part because it's a really interesting challenge to try and localize sound as it's moving around you. Um, through touch. Um, so once you uh, pass that part, you the way the story mode goes is you enter the mind of the character that you're interacting with. So after you kind of track their sound, then this is kind of an abstract representation of entering their mind. Um, in order to win this part of the game, the goal is to gather all of these moving spheres on your finger. Um, the challenge, of course, is to do so before they all leave your finger, because if you see it, I pick one up and it gets big, um, it actually leaves my finger after a couple seconds. So, this down. Can you, can you, can you, you can actually keep oh, sorry about that. Okay. okay, sorry about that. So, um, if I go ahead and collect all these things, and you can see they'll get big, then I win and I progress on to the next part of the story. 
Um, so once you pass through a part, um, a sound interaction and then a touch interaction, you um, learn more and more about the story specific to that character. Um, again, since this is kind of more of a, a personal journey, I would say, uh, when you're going through this part of the game, um, I'm just going to skip through the linear audio parts. But um, I do encourage you all to come and listen to it, it's really great. We have fade, uh, a fade out and fade back in to signify a chapter change. So if you click on the bottom, you see that we're now in chapter two, which is the autopsy. Um, skipping ahead, this is a second sound challenge. So we have a couple different mechanics for the way the sound um, is going to come at you. For the first one, it was more of a swirling motion, so the sound would be circling around your head, where in this one, the sound is actually charging at you from one of the corners of the screen. Uh, this presents a very interesting interaction to the audio uh, when you're listening to it on the headphones, because uh, you can actually hear it coming at you from a single direction, where before, um, it's you could track it going around you. Again, I'm just going to win really quick, because um, I feel that this part is definitely best experience uh, when actually playing it in the game, um, because it's more of a personal headphone experience. Uh, so moving on to the second mini game uh, that we designed, uh, it's built on the same mechanic as the first one. However, with this one, you have enemies involved. So if you pick one up and hit one of the enemies, it'll knock it off your finger. Um, so not only is there a progression in the audio interaction becoming harder and harder, but there's also a progression in these mini game. Uh, mini game challenges getting harder and harder as well. Um, so this kind of pattern keeps repeating. Um, we have five total chapters in the story mode of the game. Um, and but basically the way it goes is you have an interaction, uh, you have to go into their mind and have a uh, touch-based interaction, and then you learn more about the story. So basically what we're doing is we're going through these different characters and learning more and more about yourself as you go. Um, this is the last sound challenge that I'm going to show you guys. Um, let's see if I can beat it. Um, and one thing that I really want to stress for this is um, all the recordings that we got for this, um, along with the art, are, are all original pieces. Um, we actually collaborated both with um, sound actors here, uh, or voice actors, sorry, here uh, at USC, along with uh, music composers, um, to get all original material for the game. Um, so we'll hopefully be ready to get this on the App Store uh, pretty soon. We need to get our file size down a little bit. But um, I think the playing the uh, audio interaction challenge is a very interesting um, mechanic. Sorry, this is kind of hard to play uh, without actually having the headphones on. Um, it, is, it is indeed an audio game designed for headphones. Um, but hopefully I can just win here really quickly. And we can progress on. Okay, so now you come into uh, an even more difficult challenge. Um, and you can see for each one of these challenges, there's a unique enemy that you have to face. First, there was no enemy. Then there was one that was just kind of static on the screen moving around. And now you have these teleporting enemies that are kind of appearing and disappearing very unexpectedly. Um, it poses kind of an interesting problem for the game, and I think really ramps up gameplay as you get further and further in, into the game. Um, so you can see I won there. Um, so there, that is actually one part. We still have to put in like one, a couple pieces of audio. But um, I'm just going to go back to the main menu for now. Basically, the way that story mode progresses is you keep going through the chapters. And then uh, once you're all the way towards the end, you kind of um, you learn your fate towards the end of the game. And um, in order for you guys to figure that out, I'd like you to come play our game and hopefully beat it. So. That's, that's one thing we we'll have to do. Uh, aside from that, we have um, access to all of our mini games uh, via the mini game menu. So if I go in and play the fourth mini game on mechanic one, you're going to see this is the same mechanic that uh, was built that we were using in uh, the main part of the game. Um, this is a different type of enemy in the center that will knock it off your finger. Um, in the upper right, we have a timer that's, um, that's uh, constantly cycling. And we actually have a complete high score system set up here. So if I can, so if I can win here, and I can set the new high score, and it will be stored. Um, we have a so our high score system basically saves your best time for each level um, that you can achieve. Uh, this one's kind of hard, so I'm just gonna skip that. I'm gonna go back and try and do an easier one for now, uh, if you guys don't mind. Um, and I'll do so by first interacting or introducing our second minigame mechanic. So 
Uh, once we were done with that first mechanic, we thought, let's, let's figure out a different cool thing to do with these spears. So basically the way this one works is all of these spears are housed in the jail over here to the left. Uh, and if you drag it out and drop it in the main scene, it'll spawn the spear back over into the jail. And your objective for this part is to drag them and get them onto this goal each time. So if I drag over and get them all onto the goal, then I will win, I will win the mini game. Uh, you can see that my time was 30.1 and my previous high score was 7.8, so I didn't win. But um, I promise you that the, uh, the high score mechanic actually does work. So if I go ahead and hopefully set a new high score, 7.5, uh, when I go back in, the high score will be, will be reset properly. So you can see that the, rescore, the high score resets properly. So um, you have a way to kind of, you can sit here and go in and try and beat all your high scores, which I think is a really interesting challenge. Similar to the mini, first minigame mechanic, we have all these different levels for the second one as well. Um, some of them are built on a slightly different mechanic though. So like for instance, the fourth minigame, rather than having one clock hand in the center, we have all these different clock hands, which kind of gives you a maze that you have to navigate through, um, which I think actually creates a really interesting gameplay. So um, it's more of a, uh, it's more of like, a, it turns into more of a maze game than anything else. Um, and also the, the more spears that you drag over and drop into the thing, all the clock hands start spinning faster and faster. Uh, so it ramps up the gameplay and makes it more and more difficult. It's actually pretty fun. Um, we we play tested this with a couple of people and um, it seemed pretty sticky. Like they would pick it up and people really wanted to win and set a new high score. So uh, that was fun to, fun to, do, to do too. Um, there you go. So I just won that one. Didn't beat my high score, but I can always go back and play again, right? Uh, just to show our last enemy really quick, these are called our smart enemies. And the way these work um, in this game mechanic is once the sphere, you pick up the sphere and it leaves the house, the one that is closest to you, uh, whichever one you have your finger on, they will come and kind of flood you, and then the other ones will go towards the goal. So it makes it quite, it makes it actually pretty, in pretty difficult, sorry, uh, to go and, and get this thing home to the, uh, to the goal. Um, and I think this poses the greatest challenge um, in terms of gameplay because it's really difficult to, uh, to get this thing to win. But if I can do it really quick, so I have experience, then, uh, then I won, so I set a new high score and I come back to the mini game. Um, we have pretty much all the gameplay is, um, is completely ready. You never have to like clear the memory or anything. It's, whole game is pretty much there, and uh, that's the majority of our functionality. Uh, we also have the credit menu available right here to show uh, everyone who worked on the game, uh, both from a programming and a voice actor and music composition standpoint. Um, again, we had all original voice tracks and music in the game, so um, it's a really interesting experience, and I, I hope that you guys will all come check it out at Demo Day, because we will be there, and it will be playable. Thank you.